Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream once again. Um, the live stream lesson. Uh, sorry for being late. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving yesterday. Um, but let's get back to work. So today we are going to continue with book number three. Uh, we are in Gavot and C minor. That's the number six in the book. So without further ado, I was making sure I'm in tune. Let's take a listen to how the piece goes. All right. Ready? It's difficult for other reasons than a lot of people think, I think. So let's take a look at the sheet music together and let's go through it together. Um, the notes are not too difficult actually, um, but we are dealing with flats now um, instead of sharps. Before we were uh, looking at a lot of the pieces that were that had sharps, like the F sharp, excuse me, F sharp, C sharp, in the likes right now if you take a look here we're dealing with sharps or we're dealing with flats right let's change the color so we're dealing with b flat e flat and a flat right so this means that we're always going to be playing uh b flat a flat and e flat so just be aware of that when we play in with the in the keys that are in flats, we have to be aware of left hand extensions in all positions. So today we're going to be taking a look at it. Also, another note about extension, relax thumb under second finger. All right, so the first phrase we're going to take a look, the yellow phrase, let's just take a look until here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play the notes. Don't worry about the bowings and things like that. Just play the notes. Um, don't worry about the slurs just yet, right? 
And I'm going to explain you a little bit, step by step, uh, what all the different things, uh, the, the fingerings and um, all of that. So let's go through it together, note by note from the beginning. We start with C, fourth finger on G string, right? You can tune with the open C string to make sure you're in tune. All right, so let's go. C, E flat, we're gonna be extending back, stay in position, right? Extend, F natural, G, Here, when you play the open D, D, we're gonna go to third finger on that C instead of fourth finger. Why? Because here, in the next part, we're gonna be playing flat here. So I'm gonna just write flat on the side. C, that way your fourth finger is right there on the A flat. That's why we move to the third finger. I guess it's considered second position here. And then, so if we continue. And then here we shift back to the second finger in order to extend for that E flat back, right? So if we go from another way to find that A flat is find the G with the third finger and then there. Fourth finger right there. Go back to second finger, extend back. go until here for now here we have to be careful of the naturals we're not playing flats for those so let's just play until um, the beginning until the middle of measure four still the same thing slowly note by note ignore the bowings for now all right, let's play until measure four. Ready and extension and and we're gonna shift to third finger on the C. At, so we're right there. A flat's right there. Shift back and then extension back. Naturals. Uh, how did it go? Not too bad, right? The extensions are a bit tiring, but uh, once you get used to it, um, I think you'll be fine. All right, so let's move on. Let's read from where we stopped until um, the end of the line. It's basically the same thing, except how the phrase ends. You'll hear it. Let's do the same thing. Play it slowly. And then we'll... I'll explain something cool. So... Same thing. Slowly. Ready and extension E flat and extension. Stay extended. Shift to third finger on C. And then A flat's right there in that position. Same thing, shift to second finger on the F, same F, extend back, so the only thing different is this part right here, right? 
That's the only different part. Everything else is the same thing. Uh, same idea uh, with the extensions and the shifting and all of that, right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So, now I want to show you guys something. If we take a look, so if we continue, da 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 da. Da 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 um, it's as if there's a repeat sign, right? But I don't know why they did it in this case, but this is what they did. So this time around, let's try and play the Boeings. I'll explain the Boeings a little bit. It's basically, we're just bowing all the way through, um, just long bows, right? And then I'll explain when it happens. All right, so let's try and go from end of line two, end of the second line. So this time we're gonna try with the slurs, okay? And let's try it in rhythm, slowly, but still in uh, uh, in rhythm. One, one, and two. So da ki da ki. Let's go that fast. One and two and end of second line. One and two and one and separate. There is separate, right? Uh, let's write reminder bowings. So if we start up over there, that's a down bow up. Down, up, down, up. All right, so until uh, where we stopped is pretty straightforward, just slurs. And then here is separate, sep, well, two, two slurred and then C separate. And then the next part is kind of tricky because we're... Uh, we're kind of repeating the note that we're slurring, right? So... to do is kind of accent the the first note give the first note of each group uh, and then kind of let go of the inter just kind of relax on the second note right and then shift So that's the difficult part. It's doing it slowly is pretty easy. But then doing it fast kind of gets tricky. So let's continue on. We stopped at the end. We stopped there. Continue. Slur, slur, separate. They're separate. Dun, dun. Same thing. Land on the third finger. So, 
that's the main theme that you need to focus on. Um, but we're not going to do it a bunch of times here, mainly because um, we play it um, two more times, I believe, um, in, in the piece later. So um, we'll get a chance then. Uh, but try and um, work on it slowly like this. Um, the, the hardest part, I believe, is going to be this pattern. The da 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 that guy and this guy so just remember this this is really in the Boeing <laughs> Another thing you can practice is kind of practice the, the finger, where you um, do fast short, like that. Like that. And then the opposite, long short, right? So that's going to help you kind of get a really nice clean um, snappy fingers and also just uh, uh, that's how I describe articulated sound right like it, even without the bow you can hear you can hear the my fingers on the, the fingerboard right so so that's just a good way of building up strength in your in your hands all right so let's take a look at the next section which is right here let's take a look until there So I'm highlighting the parts that are difficult. So, same thing. Let's just do it separate. Bow, um, just separately. Let's just learn the notes first without the slurs, right? So first thing is E flat. And then F, G is we have that normal extension. First position extension, right? And then what we do... For that A flat, instead of going shifting half step down or things like that, we're gonna shift down all the way to fourth position. So remember that fourth position normally we can land on the A, right? So A natural, excuse me. So what's happening here? The 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 position that we're shifting to is actually fourth position but we're going to land it kind of opening up our finger like this. So that's A flat. So I kind of measure my fourth position by how my thumb is landing in the, in the corner here, like that. So A flat, and then next part, B flat. Same thing. C fourth position, right? C A flat is extension back from that. So um to to kind of get used to that position, you can do this. So four two so C B flat and then A natural and then do one with A flat. And you can do the other way starting on A. That's just to get used to the, the fourth position extension position. So those are the two positions that you're really going to be uh, practicing. The, fir uh, the extension on the first position and extension on the fourth position. So 
Let's start from here again. Wait. So, and then C, B flat, A flat, and then shift to G, first position. from there. E flat, F, F, G, G, F, F, G, G, E flat, E flat, F, and two. All right. So that's really going to be the um, difficult part for the left hand. Let's take a look at the next phrase, next purple phrase, which comes until here. What's going on here? So the next purple phrase is the same deal as far as the first part. The only different part is here. So let's try that. The second phrase, um, a little bit before measure 21, okay? So, same thing, E flat, just the notes, no slurs. E flat, F natural. See how I'm floating my thumb also? I'm not squeezing, I'm not leaving it on the neck. Try to just relax. G, A flat. And C, A flat, shift back, and then we're gonna go to A string, it's B flat, so we're gonna bar the A and D string, like that. Here, you know what? Don't, I like to make my job easier. So one three one three. I think that's better. Mm. So what's go what's gonna happen is like this. One three and then shift to where your third finger was. And then right there you're in uh for G and then A flat. And then yeah, go back to second finger extension. Like that. All right. So really, that's the... It's kind of repetitive, the phrase. The only thing that's different is the ending phrases, right? So let's try now playing with the bowing, with the slur. Uh, slightly slowly. So da, di, da, di, dum, dum. Be careful of this double up bow. All right. The, that looks like a frowny face. All right. So let's now try with the um, bowing slurs and everything. One and two and ready go. Shift and and up and up here. So that is another part that's kind of difficult. What I do is I kind of Um, not, I guess, accent. You can call it accent. It's kind of done with 
the bow. I'm kind of just pulling it. But I'm also giving a little bit of space in between. Kind of jumping a little bit. So that, that's the sensation. So don't use too much bow. And I guess kind of push into the, the highlight and note. And then kind of lift your bow. It's going to give it a kind of skipping feeling, right? Same thing with this part. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. That's another place. Be careful of the bowing there. Uh, let's try that one more time. Let's do the purple phrase one more time. Uh, the purple highlighted parts, remember to pull on the bow, right, slightly. I'm gonna do it kind of exaggerated here. One and two and ready, go and shift and and shift back up and up and pull. Oh, ah. One and two and shift and and shift back up. So, that's the purple phrase. Try to practice how we practice. Learn the notes first. The, the difficult, that, the, that shift is gonna be the difficult part. Maybe practice this. Play G, go down to, or G, go down to C, and then, like that. Used to going down is easier, I think. So go get used to the motion. If if you get used to the motion one direction, uh, you'll pick up the other direction quickly. So really, you just need to practice th that two fingering, two positions, right? Uh, extension in first position and then extension in fourth position and then you're just linking the two together all right that's the purple phrase so if we continue and take a look we actually come back to the yellow phrase da 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 same thing, right? Same thing as well. So, let us continue. We're going to go with blue this time. So let's do the first blue phrase. Uh, just remember, we have to do a bow re retake here. Dun, dun, dun. Retake. Wait. Retake. So, slowly, same thing, just notes, no uh, slurs, anything like that. So, 
G, G, F sharp. A. Uh, we go to A natural, right? Instead of A flat. So here we can go to open string. the open string. So, F sharp, G, G open A, B flat, right? So until there is pretty normal. And then here is pretty straightforward too. We're just doing extension now, extension then first position on the A string. Difficult. So one more time, just the uh, eighth notes, right? Extension. If you want to do the, the fingering on the bottom, these guys, um, it's a good fingering. I like it. So, but uh, so it would be like this. And then you would go to second position. Or maybe you can just do open A and kind of keep. Mm, well. So here's the thing, if you use uh, a fingering, fing uh, the different, uh, like if you use the fingering on the bottom, that A is going to change sound, right? That's one of the things that you have to consider. Um, otherwise, open A is perfectly fine, you know? <laughs> slurs right now. All right, let's finish out the blue phrase, second blue phrase, right? F sharp, same thing. B flat. Here we do shift. Here we are shifting. And we are doing two, four, I'm just making reminder. All right, so let's try it out. Second, second blue frame. B flat, and then we're gonna shift to second position, right? Find it with the open G string. You're gonna know because it's just gonna sound weird. I like it. But if you're in tune, you should only hear the the note G, right? So starting from G, where it says piano on the bottom, F sharp, G, F sharp, G, A. So we're all in the the second position. One and two. Just like that. Not too difficult. I'm just gonna write some reminders. Like for example, that's a flat, that's a flat. I think that's enough. Yeah, the blue section isn't too bad, actually. Alright, so let's try the blue section now with the bowing, right? Um, let's keep, still keep it under tempo. 
Um, so there's just going to be slurs. Some of the notes are going to be con connected with in the same bow. Just keep that in mind, okay? So blue section. One, two, ready, and slur. Once again, for the these slurred eighth notes, just try and keep the first notes strong, like this. And I think that's gonna help you out. Let's do it one more time, the blue phrase. All right, one, two, blue phrase. and A naturals, right? Just be aware of those and I think you'll be fine. All right, so the last phrase, once again, is the yellow phrase. Um, but since we didn't play the yellow phrase in a while, let's just play it um, and see how it goes. I'm just making reminders of where the shifts are. Let's write some bowing reminders as well. These are separate. Da down up, da down up, down up, down up, da a uh, a uh, down up, down up up, down up, da down up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. All right, last yellow phrase. Let's give it a go. Let's just practice. Da, 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 di, di, da. Ready, and. difficult if you divide it up like this right so um, the yellow phrase keeps on repeating so just really all you have to do is practice the purple and blue phrase and that's just gonna save you a lot of times you don't have to play from beginning to the end always um, just practice the things that you really need to practice um, yellow um, phrase is a little bit tricky so, and it also repeats a lot, so you can also, you know, spend a little bit more time with it as well. So, let me, let's give you guys some pointers, some tips to help you play this better, right? Um, so, this is mainly in extensions, right? Left hand extensions in all positions, well, not all positions necessarily, it's only first and sec mostly mainly first and fourth position 
So be be really comfortable in those positions. Um, and the way to do that, so this is very important. So relax thumb and under the second finger. So if it really goes like, this. oh, I don't know if I can do it. And I don't know if you can see it, but if I do the extension, you can see my thumb is still under the second, or yeah, under the second finger, right? The middle finger. And I'm just reaching back like this. So the sensation that you're really doing is I, I like to um, have my students do this. Just hold your cello here on the side and just move your first finger to the side, right? You can, you can kind of support your um, hand with the thumb, you can kind of grip it so it doesn't move and just move sideways, right? So the reason why I have my students do that is because sometimes I see and I used to do this too. Sometimes I see students kind of twist their hands back like this um, or swivel back and forth. It's the swiveling isn't too bad, actually. But if I, it's very uncomfortable. So the reason why we don't want to be twisting our hands like this is because then our pinky misses the strings, right? You can see how I'm trying to reach with my pinky, but I can't. So that the reason why we want the palm of our hands flat against the fingerboard is that. So we still can play with our fourth finger. So really the, the sensation is like this. What you can do is stretch out the first finger, keep uh, the second, third, and fourth finger together like that. And then grip the cello and bring your fingers curved, right? Curve your fingers like that. You're gonna feel a stretch in, in between the first and second finger. So that's one way to kind of get used to your hands feeling, getting your hands in the position, getting used to the position of the extension and without kind of twisting your hands like that. That's, that, don't do that, okay? So that's mainly, that's gonna be a key um, exercise. Um, practice extension motion. on the shoulder of cello, right? So try to do this, right? On the side, just scooch over, uh, just move your finger out like that. You can also stretch a little bit, feel, feel that webbing stretch out and try not to move like that, right? That's the reason why I do it here, because if you keep your fingers here, you kind of can't twist your hand. And then just grip the cello and bring your fingers to a curve when it's extended. So that's the exercise that I like my students to do. Try to also, uh, well, here you're not in the position. When you're doing it on the cello, try to keep your wrist as flat as possible it's not possible sometimes, but try to do that. So that's the main pointer um, of doing extensions. Another thing that will help you is bring left elbow up when playing on G, C string. So what do I mean by that? On the A and D, our elbow is normally up down here. So if you see how by just raising my elbow, 
my fingers are already automatically moving to the G and the C, right? So that's what I mean. Uh, it just helps a lot uh, when you're doing extensions or just things like that. <laughs> So string crossing really, in terms of your left hand, uh, you can just do it with your elbow. That's, got, that's an easy way to kind of just know where your hands and fingers are um, in terms of the, the string, right? Okay. What else? Um, I talked about the eighth note slurs, the these guys, right? So first of all, practice the bowing, the strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Just kind of lean into the first one. First note of the slur, because we also have the purple one here. Here is a different feeling because we're still we we have to accent the f the beat the important beat right so be careful of that there um, the Boeing is pretty straightforward I think. Dynamics, once again, is controlled by um, your, your bow. I'll write that down. Use bow amount to control dynamic. And volume. All right. Uh, well, I think let's just play it once through slowly, and I think that'll give you guys an idea of how you should practice, and why I only practice a yellow, f like this, like yellow phrase, purple phrase, and blue phrase, instead of just going from top to bottom, um, just practice in chunks like how I did, um, so you're not just repeating unnecessarily, right? Alright, so um, I'm going to play from the beginning and then I'll shout out some things and explain. Uh, don't be startled, okay? Let's just try and get from the beginning to the end once through, kind of under tempo. And then we'll end the class by playing it with the accompaniment, okay? Alright, slowly, from the beginning. One, two, ready, go! And... Extension to the third finger.
that's how it sounds from the beginning till the end. Um, we're gonna play with the accompaniment in a bit, but I just want to explain another reason why we want to practice like this, um, according to phrases and not just repeating from the beginning to the end. Um, if we, if we, if you just practice from the top to bottom like how we did, but just keep on repeating that, um, you tend to remember if you make a mistake in the middle when you do that, uh, you tend to not be able to go forward or play through, right? You always have to go back to the beginning and start all over. When you practice like how we did, just break it into phrases and start um, where the phrase is starting, right? Um, I can tell you, oh, let's go from the purple phrase and you know where to go to, right? If you practice like that, even if you make a mistake in the piece, uh, when, we're, when we're playing all uh, from the beginning to the end, um, you're able to recover and keep on going with the piece. And that is a very important skill to learn. And it, it, as with any skills, it's just practice. And also, but there is a trick to it, which is um, kind of knowing how the music is structured and how the, the phrases, where the phrases begin in, begin where the phrases end and things like that, right? So I hope the, this color coding, the music helps um, a lot. Uh, it helps me. This is actually how I um, study music, um, the sheet music. So um, I hope it helps you guys as well. So let's play with the accompaniment and call it a day, okay? All right, give me one second. All right, ready? real quick I can't ruin this I can't end the stream like this all right just give me one all right sorry about that y'all let's see if it works <laughs>
we go. All right. All right, folks. So thanks for tuning in. That's going to be all for the lesson today. Um, if you have any questions, remember, feel free to um, either drop it in the chat when we're doing it live or write it in the comment if you're watching it after. Um, and yeah, as always, I'm trying to figure out the new schedule still, um, but I'll try and do it this Monday uh, in the evening. It'll be 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Um, so yeah, we'll be continuing on with the, the book. Uh, with uh, number seven. Uh, I don't know what piece it's going to be. I forget. I think it's minuet, right? So stay tuned for that. Um, if this video helped you at, uh, at all, just drop a like. Try and um, spread the word, you know. Let's feed it to the algorithm. And yeah, happy practicing, everyone. Bye.